Thank you. Uh, so, uh, today's first talk uh, will be on, on it an introduction, I mean, uh, it is intended to be a talk for uh, absolute beginners, of non-experts. So, I apologize to the experts because we have also experts, but maybe it will be a, a, f a little bit fun even for experts to, to go back to the students' years when uh, they learned some uh, elementary differential equations. So uh, the title of the talk is uh, Introduction to the Center Focus Problem. So what is a center? Uh, so we begin with the very beginning. What is the center? So the notion of center was uh, introduced uh, by Poincaré in the two centuries ago, so more than one century ago. Uh, and uh, in, it introduced, he introduced it like this. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, he uh, introduced the whole terminology around uh, this uh, topic. Uh, he uh, began with uh, studying linear differential equations in, in dimension two, so uh, on the plane, like this. For those who know uh, what is a connection, uh, the old name of connection is a differential equation. Uh, so uh, the face portrait in the case when this is linear, uh, of course it is uh, as everybody I hope know, but otherwise I shall picture it. It is either a focus, this uh, center, that is to say the title of uh, this uh, short introduction. It can be also, uh, a saddle point or uh, it can be some, some attractor like this. Uh, which is called node. So you have four topological types, node, saddle, center, and focus. And this was introduced uh, by Poincaré and uh, obviously this uh, geometric. And when you are, uh, we have a nonlinear equation, we hope, namely, maybe, that the picture will be like, like this, but slightly deformed. And soon after that, uh, there was a second uh, definition. Uh, as I say, soon I see that there is a 30 years uh, difference, but uh, still, maybe it appeared before, but, um, in um, later papers by Dulac, uh, he introduced a different definition, uh, which says the following. Uh, okay, in this case, <coughs> which is the center, the canonical form of the center is the following, and it has a first integral, which is x squared plus y square, it's a first integral. It means a preserved quantity. <coughs> it is a constant along the orbits. <coughs> and uh, Poincaré proved that uh, something si similar happens in, uh, in the nonlinear case under some conditions. If there is a center, so we have a first integral like this, but probably nonlinear one. So there are points, I mean, some series which is <coughs> which converges moreover. And uh, uh, the difference between uh, the first and the second uh, definition, which is the second is the following, uh, we shall call it a center if you have a first integral like this. I shall uh, formulate exactly the Poincaré Lipunov theorem just later. But just to <laughs> fix the ideas, there are two definitions. One geometric, just you, you look at the picture and you, you say, ah, this is a center because all orbits are closed. This is the definition. If all orbits are closed, it's important case because it means uh, for the physicist, mechanicians, it means stability. We, uh, we don't es escape. 
uh, from uh, a neighborhood. <coughs> so this is the geometric, natural geometric definition. But if you suppose that there is moreover a first integral, and there is a first integral, which is obvious, but uh, the question is rather uh, whether this first integral is analytic or not. And why analytic? Because when uh, the function is, can be derived, it's much more, much better. At this time, uh, uh, most functions, uh, I mean, 19th century, most functions were considered to be analytic. If you don't say nothing about some function, at this period, uh, the people assumed implicitly that it's analytic. But there are other reasons why this function, this function uh, it is very interesting to be analytic. The other reason is the following. When it is analytic, it converges not only on the field of re ra um, real numbers, but on the complex numbers, which, which is, uh, as we know now, it is very important that we may go to a complex domain and study the problem uh, in a complex domain, and uh, somehow it uh, makes the things easier. It was very well noticed by Dulac, who worked all the time in a complex domain, even without mentioning explicitly, but implicitly, as you diagonalize a matrix, it will be in a complex domain. But let us see what happens in the el very elementary, indeed very elementary linear case. We, we have a linear system, <coughs> And we want to study the face portrait. The first guess is to take the uh, eigenvalues of the matrix. <coughs> if the eigenvalues are real, they will be positive, negative, or positive, positive, something like this. It is probably easy to guess that we don't have a center because we have uh, separate traces, so we cannot have, cannot have uh, closed. Uh, <coughs> Uh, trajectory. So in the, from this point of view, the interesting case is where we have eigenvalues which are complex conjugate. So in the case which is uh, here on the, um, this slide, we, hear, we see um, a linear system with uh, <coughs> eigenvalues which are of this form. Now, what is the general solution of such a system? First of all, we notice the following ex exercise for students. Maybe uh, even first year it will be difficult. Maybe second, it is okay. Uh, the exercise is the following. If you have a real matrices, matrix like A, B, C, D, which has two complex conjugate uh, eigenvalues, show that we can find a linear change of the variable over R, over R, not over C. So a real change of variables, which puts the matrix into this nice form on, on the second line. So that if you have A, B, C, D over R, you can uh, conjugate this matrix to, to this one. So we'll take this nice form of uh, a real matrix. And if you want to stay over the reals, it is important. When you have this form, uh, you can uh, easily just uh, solve <coughs> the system like this. <coughs> and this is the general solution. So this is exponential of some matrix. And the solution is written uh, there. You have expo exponential of alpha t and uh, sinus and cosinus, which are periodic functions. And uh, now it is clear that it is a center if and only if alpha is equal to zero from this. <coughs> so center in, in this linear case is equivalent to alpha equal to zero. But there is also maybe Another point which can be mentioned here, that in this case there is a funny uh, description of this uh, linear system in terms of uh, complex uh, numbers. Uh, that is to say, okay, this is some very economical way to write this system. If you identify the real plane with the complex plane, that is to say, identify R2 to C, 
like uh, this x plus i y equals in such a way it seems to be a little bit artificial this then you can write uh, your linear system in a very economical way it just z prime equal to alpha minus i b z beta z. So recall z is written like this where x, y are real and then equating on the right on the left uh, the real and the imaginary part you can you get two equations over r which are just the initial equation. So it, it is often used in the literature because it is an economic, economic way to write down, uh, in many cases, uh, equations. Okay, but if you uh, stay in a complex domain, of course, you can diagonalize uh, freely. There is uh, no difficulty. So you see that in a complex domain, the things are much simpler, much simpler. <clears throat> Still, uh, in the case when you need uh, to stay in the real domain, because you want to study the real phase part and not the complex one, the preceding remarks are very important. So from this uh, diagonalization, of course, you can uh, conclude that there is a first <coughs> integral, uh, which you can write uh, down. And if you ask uh, yourself whether you have um, um, a center on or not, you can give an answer in terms of this first integral, which describes the general solutions. So clearly, if, uh, the ratio of lambda 1, lambda 2 is not rational. It cannot be uh, first integral. Uh, it cannot be an analytic integral. It, it cannot be a center over the reals. It cannot be also uh, something analytic because there is a first integral which is transcendental. Transcendental is not analytic. But let us see at least one example, uh, a little bit more trivial than the linear case. So this is our first example, which, is, which goes beyond the linear case. And uh, uh, here we, we see some strange uh, notations, because uh, until now we wrote uh, a vector field, and here we have differential form. Uh, this is a dual description of this differ differential equation. Uh, by this I mean the following, if you take the differential equation like this. So this is an explication for the students. You can divide the first by the second and you get this. Now <coughs> cancel this dt so you get uh, and to uh, simplify, you get uh, Q dx minus P dy equal to zero. So clearly, uh, this is equivalent to the uh, initial vector field, but the time this parameter t disappeared because we don't need, in fact, the parameterization of the orbits we study just the orbit. So it is more convenient to um, say uh, we study curves such that the restriction of this differential on the curve is ident identically zero. It vanishes. This is equivalent to say we found an orbit of the initial differential equation in more, more fancy terms. Uh, it defines a foliation of dimension one in co-dimension one in C2 this differential form. So we can study differential forms. And so I wrote the differential equation in question in terms of uh, one forms like this. So let us see the first equation. Of course, you recognize that this uh, linear differential equation. So we, we know everything because you can uh, uh, check what are the, um, the eigenvalues. <coughs> For instance, if the the, we, we notice that uh, the center here corresponds to eigenvalues which are plus minus i. That is to say the ratio 
of the two eigenvalues is uh, minus one. If it is not minus one, it will be not a center in the, in, in, like this. So we know everything. And uh, we can check easily that it is not a center, uh, this differential, linear differential equation. Uh, like this, you ju just uh, compute the eigenvalues, you see that they are a complex conjugate and uh, the alpha is not zero, so it cannot be a center. <coughs> And I put uh, some epsilon, uh, curiously. It is because, because of the lecture of uh, Hussein afternoon when we shall see such a situation. Some differential equation, like uh, differential of x squared plus y squared, these are circles, and which is perturbed. And we shall perturb this. We shall write down the return map. So epsilon zero, and this is epsilon non-zero. And when you study this return map, uh, we can uh, describe analytically, and the leading term will be given with some abelian integral, or more complicated than that, like it, it iterated in integral, and uh, it will be a center if this integral is zero. So we, you can check like this, <coughs> that uh, this leading term is just integral of x dx. You see this x dx, which is there, uh, over x squared plus y squared equal to constant. So this some integral depending on a parameter. Of course, it is not zero. Why it is not zero? Because by Stokes theorem, it is double integral of uh, constants uh, over uh, over uh, disks. Can compute. X dy. X uh, dy. Yeah. Thank you. So it is not a center. And if it is not, not a center, it has no first integral, uh, analytic at least. It has no analytic integral because uh, the level set of analytic function, like f equal to some constant, cannot be a spiral. It's easy to justify more rigorously than that. It cannot be <laughs> analytic first integral. So it is not uh, a center, at least in the sense of the an analytic definition of center. There is no analytic first integral. Now I, I wish to show that the second differential equation, the second line, number two, which is nonlinear, in fact has a first integral and uh, it has a geometric center, but it has no analytic first integral. So this shows the definition of Poincaré here works. The definition of Dulac does not work. So it, there is no analytic uh, center because there is no first integral, but uh, geometrically will be like this. Uh, but what is the relation between two and one? The relation is very simple. The second is a pullback from the first. The pullback is given by x equal to c square. You do what? You take just uh, in your differential equation uh, the first one. You put uh, uh, x equal to c square and you get the second. Okay, so it's a double covering. The second lives on the y c sp space, so to obtain the first from the <coughs> second, you go in the inverse way. That is to say, you make a pullback. So the relation is very simple. Uh, what is geometrically this relation? If the first is a focus, We do what? We take x equal to c square, but c square is always positive. So, in fact, we shall take just a half of the half of the face plane. It is forbidden to to look at the negative. And you take two pieces because uh, the solution here is uh, c is uh, plus minus square. So you take 
a second piece of this, something like this, and you glue them so on the When you glue, you, you, you get a center, in fact. I, I mean, you get uh, closed orbits. There is a perfect symmetry between the left half plane and the uh, right half plane. So uh, ge geometrically, you have some questions. Uh, well, maybe this uh, pullback will be uh, a center. Indeed, it is a center because at least uh, in general, it will be rather a focus, but it has a symmetry. Uh, the symmetry is uh, C can be multiplied by minus one, and the uh, uh, differential form is invariant under such uh, involution. And as it is invariant, it means that the face portrait is also invariant under such uh, uh, involutions. And there will be a symmetry, but if I picture now an orbit like this, because of the symmetry, this initial point should be, in fact, uh, because of the symmetry, it should be like this. So it should clo be closed. So because of the symmetry, the second argument, we should have a geometric center. But now, question, is it possible that this second system with a geometric center, which is non-linear, <coughs> has an analytic first integral? Let us suppose that there is a first uh, uh, integral, which is analytic. If there is a first integral, which is analytic, in x, in c, and y, because of the symmetry, uh, of the system, uh, this first integral is also invariant with respect to the symmetry. It means, in, in effect, in fact, that uh, it depends on xi square, but not on xi. That is to say, it was analytic if you develop into a power series all terms which uh, have an even power, uh, odd power will be zero. And so you have like this. So uh, the particularity of this analytic function is that you can make a pullback of this function. Sorry, wouldn't it be the case that we have uh, a first integral which is invariant, but not, you seem to be claiming that every first integral is invariant? Mm -hmm. No, it cannot be because uh, um, the first integral is constant along the, the orbit. So if you make the involution, uh, the orbit, you don't change the orbit. It's, uh, it, it does not sense orbit to another orbit. It, it sends each orbit to the same orbit. So for this reason, you cannot be another. Uh, and uh, it means that the, the constant remains the same. Uh, the function f takes the same value after the evolution along the orbit. So you cannot have all odd powers. <coughs> And uh, for this reason, we conclude that the function f x y is the first integral of the initial system, which is wrong because we know that it is not a center. It is a focus. In, it cannot have first integral. So this is uh, an easy way to produce uh, many other such examples. You can uh, guess other examples of this type, like uh, the, the original example uh, goes back to a paper of uh, Monsieur. 92 is this one, uh, so he, he, uh, at this time it was not known. Uh, okay. At least uh, the examples were not known of uh, um, foliations on the plane which have a geometric center but without analytic first integral. So it is very similar to this one that I put on the table. Uh, you, you have a symmetry, it is uh, uh, even two symmetries uh, two involutions, uh, you can uh, r uh, take pullback of this equation like uh, in our example and reason in the same way to, to say that, okay, after the, this uh, pullback of some simpler equation, which is in fact uh, uh, with a focus, so it has no first integral, 
therefore, with these reasons, uh, reasonings, we get that this one cannot have analytic first integral, but still have a geometric center. Uh, one, uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, there is only one involution here, exactly like so you can, with respect to uh, x, yeah. only one involution. Okay, we, we arrive at the central uh, point of this talk. Uh, you, you see that there are some differences between uh, um, geometric centers defined initially by Poincaré and analytic centers, those who have an analytic first integral. So uh, we define the following. Uh, this uh, terminology, I don't know, probably it goes back to papers of uh, Alcides Lins Neto. More center, it is quite natural to call it a more center. So we shall say that uh, it has a center some uh, foliation like this, if it has a first integral, and moreover, this first integral is analytic, and moreover, it has a non-degenerate quadratic part. So we have, we have we place ourselves uh, a little bit like uh, in the situation of the linear uh, equation, which uh, if uh, the matrix is uh, non-degenerate, uh, and it has a center, it has an analytic first integral, which is x squared plus y squared. So this is the model of uh, Morse type singularity. The singularity is called, called Morse if the gradient is zero, so we have a singularity of the function. If the gradient is zero of some function, it has no linear part, but it has possibly a quadratic. If this quadratic part is non-zero, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, non-degenerate, what does it mean? Uh, the quadratic part has uh, associated symmetric matrix, matrix of coefficients of the, uh, and uh, this uh, determinant of the matrix is non-zero, so it can be put uh, this linear part in this form, x squared plus y squared, like uh, in the linear case, but moreover, Morse theorem, which uh, in this case is uh, simple to prove by hand, shows that there is a B-analytic change of the variable which puts the non-linear function into this form, simple form. So it is uh, equivalent to, to this. So this is Morse theorem, but it has nothing to do here with Morse theorem, just uh, uh, the terminology uh, is the, the following, the quadratic part is non-degenerate. <coughs> Why? We wish to this uh, first, because this is the generic situation, and there is one more reason that uh, in this case uh, we shall get there is uh, some hidden algebraic geometry behind. So there are some examples. The systems. Uh, what one can, can say the following if, if you take the geometric definition of Poincare and you place yourself in some generic situation where in fact, I don't uh, say what is generic. We shall be also in this situation of a more center. So this is a study. Both definitions will coincide then uh, in a generic situation when I did not uh, say for the moment what does it mean, generic. But uh, this theorem now will throw more light on this uh, uh, <coughs> uh, difference between geometric definition and analytic one. This is the famous uh, poincare leponov theorem. To, to say the truth, uh, it is called uh, Leponov in the Russian literature. The original theorem is uh, from 81, 19th century. Uh, in, in 92, Leponov was very young, uh, PhD student, and this is his thesis, uh, which is in fact a, a very important uh, memoir on the stability of motion, motions, and it was inspired by questions in uh, mechanics, so under which condition uh, differential system can be uh, called stable, stable, so you should understand this in a, some, 
or general way. So here we, 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 there is some rudimentary answer. On the left you have some stable system and on the right unstable. It means the following. Uh, imagine that it describes something, some motion of particle or similar. So the second portrait means that uh, uh, the, at the limit you tend to the origin or maybe if you go another limit it tends to infinity. But in the first case there is some kind of stability. We have periodic motions. So it was interesting in, in these uh, questions of uh, existence of center from more um, how to say pragmatic uh, reasons than Poincaré. In fact, he was aware of the work of Poincaré as he gives references. The memoir of uh, Lepunov is quite spectacular for this time. Uh, it was written in the University of Kharkov. Kharkov, as you know, maybe you don't know. It's uh, Kharkiv in Ukrainian. It's a city in Ukraine now. Mm, we listened uh, too much about this uh, city recently. So at this time there was a, a close collaboration between the University of Kharkiv where Lepunov worked and my university in Toulouse. So uh, his uh, paper was published first on the West uh, in the journal of our University of, uh, uh, university of Toulouse in 1997. So 15 years later published uh, on the West, then uh, it was reprinted, I think, by Princeton University, etc. But uh, now the tradition is to call this uh, Poincaré Lepunov theorem. So what uh, says this theorem? Uh, it says that if you take uh, uh, a nonlinear system, but it, its linear part is exactly what uh, what I described here of this type, A, B, C, D, where the determinants is not zero, and suppose uh, moreover that uh, we have two complex conjugate eigenvalues, exactly this situation. We, we know everything <coughs> in the linear case, can distinguish between center and focus. And so the answer of the Lepunov Poincare theorem is that the same happens in this situation in the nonlinear case. So we have a geometric center if and only if we have an analytic first integral. Moreover, this analytic first integral begins with x squared plus y squared, a plus other terms. So in a sense, uh, the, uh, this theorem has generically, what is mean generic, ge generically here? It means simply that this determinant is non-zero. So generically it is non-zero. So if it is non-zero, it's fine. It's like in the linear case. It is the same. It's very nice. What is the proof of this theorem? At this time, it was by series. Which, uh, by series, uh, okay, so I shall not speak about this proof, but the modern proof is the following. Uh, use uh, rather, without, uh, not, not to use a series, co convergent power series, but use uh, complex analysis. You go in a complex domain. You imagine that your equation is not in R2, but in C2. What does it mean? But you have, well, it means that you have a foliation in C2 when of dimension 1, each uh, orbit is in fact a complex curve. What's a complex curve? It is like, uh, like uh, C a little bit. Uh, C is uh, from real point of view is uh, two dimensional. So these are uh, uh, complex curves are from real point of view are surfaces of dimension two real, uh, dimension one complex. So they are Riemann surfaces. And uh, uh, then uh, we have two separatrices Be because of the following. If you have a linear differential location, we can diagonalize and the axis are invariant. But this is only in a complex domain because in a real domain you cannot uh, see them, they are complex. Uh, think about these uh, lines like separatrices, that is to say complex planes, complex lines if you want. You say plane because from real point of view they are planes. <laughs> these separatrices are complex uh, 
planes. So I, I try to, to picture here a complex plane. So from a real point of view, it's indeed a plane dimension two, complex dimension one. And uh, look at the holonomy. What is holonomy? Uh, holonomy is uh, something uh, very, I'd say, elementary here. We take uh, uh, just an orbit. And you, you see this orbit as a graphic of a, func of a function. So we have x and y. y depends on x, so it's a function. But probably multivalued. And this multivaluedness is called monodromy. When you make one turn like this, you get either the same thing, either not the same thing. Uh, when it is the same thing, uh, well, this is the identity map. And I, otherwise, it is not the identity. It identity has something to do with the center. Because if you picture your center, geometric center, if you suppose that you have a geometric center, you can try to picture this closed curve here. It will be something, of course, I am very, I have to say, not quite rigorous. It will be something like this, some closed curve. And then this kind of monodromy or holonomy along this curve will be identity, identity map. Because here we have infinitely many closed curves. So this return map is the identity map. So the holonomy along this uh, red curve should be identity. Now it happens that you can take the projection on you there is a way to define rigorously this projection on the separatrix and to obtain uh, some projected curve here, something like this. And as you can guess, uh, it will make one turn around the origin. If it is not so, it will be contractible and it will lead to some contradiction. But you can check that it's like this. And then uh, from this, you can deduce that in fact the holonomy along this uh, separatrix is identity. And because of uh, the symmetry, there is a kind of uh, analogous, uh, analogous uh, reasoning. So the holonomy along the other separatrix will be also the identity. And then from these two observations, you deduce that there is a first integral, which is moreover analytic. How? Oh, it will be not very difficult. Take just one point, for instance, which is regular. In a neighborhood of regular point, we have an analytic first integral. Some basic statement in differential equations. But when you are not at a singular point, we have a local first integral. And then define a global function like this. Um, this is uh, if uh, uh, two points are on the same orbit, the function takes the same values. So you say our function takes the same values along this orbit. And like this, you hope to obtain a global analytic function. Of course, it might lead to some contradiction. It might be impossible. But because of the holonomy map along this uh, curve is, in fact, the identity map, well, there will be no contradiction when you come back eventually to the initial point, we shall take the same value, so no contradiction. Like this, you define the analytic function, which is the first integral in a full neighborhood of the origin, except at the origin itself. But the origin is a point. Point is a co-dimension two in C2. And so you have uh, the situation analytic function. There is a point where you don't know what is it. It is bounded. So there is an analytic continuation of this function at this point. So this is the proof of <coughs> no? Poincaré-Lyapunov theory. OK, let us uh, continue now with some uh, more um, explicit uh, stuff, like the uh, um, Quadratic polynomial system. This is the first non-trivial case after linear case. Linear case is almost trivial. We studied everything. We know when we have a cent. We don't have a cent. Now, 
let us suppose that our polynomial function here, functions P and Q, are in fact pol polynomials and moreover of degree 2. So this some polynomial, and moreover, you can suppose them complex. So we, we go beyond the defin definition of Poincaré. Why complex? Because uh, uh, for Dulac was obvious that uh, after the poincare lyapunov theorem, we can suppose that the center is uh, exactly those who have a first integral like this. But this naturally uh, is a function defined in a complex domain, and it is even better not to take this form for the quadratic part, but the equivalent xy. Why, uh, why xy? Because this corresponds to diagonalization of the initial matrix. And uh, uh, he wrote a paper in, in 98, uh, which says the following. Uh, a quadratic system has a Morse center, Morse type center, if and only if it is equivalent after linear changes of the variables to one of the, this list of equations, which seems to be rather chaotic. It, we, we do not understand why this one and not another one. There is a, okay, there is some symmetry, but it is not seen uh, some order of this, uh, why this equation appear, what not other. What was the method of uh, Dulac? Uh, the method uh, was uh, through power series also. And he proved, in fact, more than that. He proved the following, a theorem which uh, emerged, emerged uh, explicitly later, and which says the following. The space of uh, uh, systems with a more center inside all space of, uh, say, polynomial systems in here, polynomial of degree two. In fact, it's in algebraic set. And who says algebraic? He says also algebraic geometry. So algebraic set, the study of algebraic sets is not something trivial. And uh, um, at this time, it was not the point of view adopted by Dulac, uh, but um, he, how to say, paved the way uh, to application of algebraic uh, geometry, this theorem. So it is curious to see what is the proof of Dulac of this theorem and why this list appears. Uh, to understand the things uh, in a mod more modern way, we can take uh, a look to a more recent paper of Alcides Linz Neto and Dominic Servo, when he, they uh, formulate, they don't prove, but formulate the same theorem in a slightly different way. <coughs> they say, okay, first uh, they, they use differentials like Dulac, but they don't say like Dulac, uh, okay, we have uh, these equations, but they put them, the same equations, in a more more nice form. Let us see the first form, point A. Point A says, in fact, that uh, our equation is uh, an exact differential, differential of some polynomial of degree three, so it is of Morse type because, at least generically, it is differential of a function like this. So it, we are not surprised, it's a center. Let us take a look at the second form. The second form, uh, in fact, uh, is uh, to understand what is written, we see some rational form. This rational form uh, is um, closed. If you take the differential, it is zero. So it is locally exact. But uh, the function, if you, if you take case B, you have uh, lambda G. divided by PG, 
Of course, you can say this is not a polynomial form, but you multiply by the denominator, it will become polynomial. So it's not a problem. It is, in fact, a differential of the following function, log p1 power alpha 1. So it has a first integral. Sorry? What? Lambda. Lambda. Uh, it's lambda. Okay. Yeah, it's lambda. Uh, the second is uh, first integral like this. And you p can continue. And in each case, uh, you can write down the appropriate first integral. And the idea is that a system which has a first integral most probably has a center. These, these functions are not polynomial. They are even transcendental. For instance, this function is transcendental. But uh, look, if you take three lines, for instance, x equal to 0, y equal to 0, x plus y plus 1 equal to 0. <coughs> and if you take the corresponding first integral, uh, then under some, for instance, suppose that lambda 1, 2, 3 are positive real numbers. Then this function vanishes al along this triangle. It, it should have a minimum or maximum inside. And this will be a critical point. And it is easy to check that it's a Morse type a singular point for this function. So locally, we shall have a center. Yeah. So this is the, the, the mechanism in, in, in which way appear centers in this list. So uh, in fact, the suggestion, which is not explicitly written here, but which is behind this theorem, of uh, Servoy, Linz, Neto is the following. In fact, they say that the um, um, quadratic system with a center, they form somehow uh, some irreducible component of uh, some uh, algebraic set. And there are exactly four irreducible components. Four. It's not visible, but it, it is not uh, difficult to deduce this from here. So to, to read this theorem uh, geometrically, it's like this. There is some set. We shall try to picture something like some set. Where, li where live this set, which has uh, four irreducible components? So you, hear, you, you listen here to some new words irreducible component, algebraic set, where lives this algebraic set? Where is this set? You have a differential equation. So we shall explain all this now. Maybe not today, but tomorrow. But uh, we can begin to, to explain a little bit more what I mean by all this. Are you sure there are four? No, they are four, and not five. It's a technical question, of course, but they are four. Th these four components are, are, are the following. They will be on the next page, probably. But I can make the, the, the list here. So the first component is uh, this corresponds to the case A. So this is differential of some uh, function, which is called D. So we call this Hamiltonian. Right, just take cubic polynomial and the differential is quadratic. The second case is, uh, say, this one, which is in the terminology of uh, <coughs> maybe Linz Neto, I don't know, <laughs> From, means take first integral of this form, P1 power lambda 1, P2 power lambda 2, P3 lambda 3, where the degrees of these polynomials 
is uh, one. So this one uh, appear here. This important. So this some uh, some set of polynomials which are parameterized by their co coefficients, and if you take the logarithmic uh, differential of this function, uh, we shall get uh, the second class. So one, one, one. So the, the sum one plus one plus one equal to three. Why three? Because the system is quadratic. If you take differential of cubic, you get quadratic. So this is the, the logic. Second case is one, two. Why? Because one plus two equal to three. There are no. The first case one, we, we can call it the case L3 Hamiltonian. And there is some more mysterious case four, which is L two three. We can say immediately, oh, but if it is two three, two plus three is not equal to three, it's five. So the system uh, will be of degree four, which is right. So it will be something like this with p of degree two, q of degree three. Generically, it's indeed of the degree four, so it's not quadratic. But if you intersect this set of such systems with the set of systems of degree two, it turns out that there is an intersection. That is to say, for special coefficients of uh, p2 and q3, it is still quadratic. And this is the missing. Uh, so you have um, no, it does not. In fact, if you if even there is a version of this theorem on, on for holomorphic foliations on P2, and it is the same. In fact, of yeah. You have a first integral which is the quotient of two polynomials of degree two. Yeah, but uh, our notation here does not take into account this line. So you have to change a little bit the notation. I, I don't. Uh, it is implicitly we have invariant line at infinity in this case, uh, so we don't say. It, it, normally, it should be something like one, 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 four times, if you take you into know, account. I understand that. What I'm saying, I'm giving you an example that's not on the list. You take the pencil of conics on picture. Yeah. This will have six invariant lines. You can put one of them at infinity, and you have an affine equation. So you say that in the case when you are a holomorphic foliation on the P2, there is one more case. And this is and what I say. If I'm not missing anything. If, uh, uh, I, you have to check this because uh, it seems to me that uh, in this same paper of uh, Linz, Neto, and Servo, they mentioned somewhere that uh, the theorem. Uh, Maybe it's not in this paper that uh, th there are still four cases for the case on P2 without invariant line. But uh, as you that, claim this, it's five. They say it's five. I know that paper by heart. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe that it's four. But, but if, if you, if you have checked, you are right. Okay, we, we can check this. Uh, this is a technical question. Oh, yeah. So the thing is right. This is the, the example I have in mind is contained in add one two. That's it. So maybe I have to stop uh, now. But uh, to just to finish, uh, maybe I speak. I speak about algebraic sets. What I want to say, but. Okay, so I shall stop uh, at this place, but just uh, I shall uh, make more precise these claims about the algebraic sets which appear and why there are four components, but tomorrow we shall give the exact definitions. So the idea is the following. We have a differential equation, polynomial, which is parameterized. It is parameterized by the coefficients of the polynomials. 
So we call this uh, set of parameters parameter space. Each uh, collection of coefficients gives a differential equation. So it gives a foliation which can have or cannot maybe uh, a center. Yes or not? So we have some, uh, how many coefficients we have? Uh, polynomial degree two has one, uh, six coefficients plus six, we have 12 parameters. So we place ourselves in a, into a 12 parameter vector space, for instance. Inside, for some parameters, we have a center. In general, we expect that we don't have, but for some special values, we have a center. So you take this subset in the 12 dimensional space of uh, parameters for which we have a center. We call this the center set. And this is the object we are interested in. The claim it is that it's algebraic set. When it's algebraic, we can study it by methods of algebraic geometry because it's the basic object of the algebraic geometry, study of algebraic sets. In this case, the Dulac theorem says in modern terms, it is some set which is uh, made from, it is an union of four irreducible components. Okay, so I shall stop, stop here and uh, the continuation tomorrow. Thank you. Any questions? Comment about the uh, proof of the Poincare Lapunov theorem. Yeah. So there, there is a proof by uh, Lapunov and Poincare using power series. There is a proof of Monsieur. But you can have a proof uh, using Poincare term map after uh, going to polar coordinates. The return map it turns out to be analytic. Which map? Return map. Yeah. It is analytic map. Yeah. So you can define first integral. The, anal the, the Poincare map is the identity, and you can define uh, first integral, which is prolonged analytically. Um, you, you mean by uh, using the return map? So you yeah. make a development of this return map, and you inspect uh, yeah. using Melnikov functions, things like this? No, 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 no. So simply the return map is, is identity. So we can define uh, first integral. Yeah, but we have, to, that, that is the point. We have to say something about the coefficients, how the coefficients of this uh, return map when you... No, 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 because it is, uh, the, the system is analytic, so the return map, uh, return map is analytic. It's analytic, but uh, it might, might have a singular, I mean... No, no, no. No, 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 it, no. What, what are you saying? When you are far from a singular point, it's like, like what you say. It's analytic. So it becomes yes, yes, more or less but, obvious. But, but the change is simple. It is just uh, the, the glowing it, it is like if you say that we have some analytic function, but uh, we want to say that it is polynomial, maybe. No, 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 there no, is some no, kind no. of algebraic no, geometry no, inside. No, it is, it is okay. Ah, it's, you say that... Uh, uh, I think that we, uh, you have to think a little bit what happens around the singularity. So it's okay, it's okay. It, it, it should be written, I, I understand the idea. But it, maybe you are right, but it, had, it should be written still. Any other question? Al, the alumnos to George, those alumnos. <laughs> Ninguém quer fazer uma pergunta? <laughs> okay, so... Huh? Well, it is easy. Uh, well, it, there is an interesting story about this. I shall explain the proof uh, that it is algebraic tomorrow. 
it is easier not so it's a theorem so it is not quite obvious but it is it is not very technical so we shall see precisely but the story is the following i learned this theorem in the contemporary form from a paper of Hussein. And, and, from and, no, no. <laughs> and Hossein in this paper gives credit to Alcides. <laughs> <Please not. laughs> but when I uh, took a look at the paper of Dulac, I saw that the proof is the same. I, I mean, this proof was in the area somewhere, but it, maybe it, it goes back to Dulac, but probably it was known already before Dulac. But it, is, it was not written in these terms. It is not, you don't find the, the word algebraic, for instance. But essentially it's the same. But we shall discuss this tomorrow. Okay. If no more questions, 10.30 if you continue. <laughs>